Uh, this is Madison with Golden Street Publishing. Um, you're listening to Culture Unmasked, and um, I'm here with Ray. You want to go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and your tags? Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Ray Mike Youngblood. I'm a freelance visual illustrator uh, slash comic book artist. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Ray's underscore arts, R-A-I-Z underscore A-R-T-S. Newman? Yo, what's up, y'all? This is uh, Chris Newman, a.k.a. Newman. Um, you can find or well, I am a, a, a artist working on it. Uh, illustrate, illustrated my own books. I'm a, a book writer, uh, and I'm starting to get into photography a little bit more. So, but you can find all that kind of stuff about me on all platforms, which is just Instagram right now at C Newman two one six. Again, that's on uh, Instagram. Um, but that's all where you can find me for right now. But uh, I'll slide it back over to Madison. Cool. And uh, you can find uh, you can find us at uh, GoldenTreePublishing.com, and the handle is Golden Tree Publishing on Instagram and Facebook. So if you type those in, uh, we'll come up. Um, but um, yeah, uh, how you guys been? Um, you guys seen anything? It's been a while, so you guys see anything that you really like since the uh, last time we talked? Movies or comics? Read anything? Any books? Anything like that? Um, I'll start it off. I just. I've I've watched uh, Titans, the Titans show on uh, the in the DC world, and then the Harley Quinn. Uh, the Titans really didn't do it for me. At the first couple episodes, cool, but like they just dragged on the thing. So it was um it was a cool watch, like the first couple episodes. But after that, it lost me. Uh, like I said, I watched that Harley Quinn. It was it was definitely it was hilarious to me. That's why I watched it. And um, you know, I kind of like that whole story and how they put it to together, and just the the comic um, value it, it brought. Man, it was hilarious. You know, it was the cartoon version. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, that that that's all I've really been doing. I've been super busy with other things. So those are only new shows that I um, I really dedicated myself to over the last month. Ray, what about you? All right, so um, I uh, I'm all caught up on Promise Neverland. Um, I just I finished that manga uh, a little while ago. Great read, um, a great ending as well. Uh, I just started this manga by Kohei Horikoshi, the creator of My Hero Academia. Um, called Sensei No Bulge. It's called Barrage in English. Um, it's only 16 chapters long because it got canceled, but uh, it was still really cool to see who Horikoshi was with his artwork back then in comparison to uh, how he is now. Um, and the art was always really good, but it's definitely a lot more polished over time. So just being able to see like his growth um, was really inspiring. Uh, as far as TV shows, um, I'm trying to think, it's definitely, it's been way too long, so I'm, I don't want to say something that I've already said in a previous uh, episode, but, um, the new season of Attack on Titans back, and, uh, man, it's, they definitely came out the gate swinging. On uh, the first episode. No spoilers, I ain't seen it yet. No spoilers. Oh man, I'm not going to spoil it, but I'm telling you, it's uh, it definitely needs to be on your priority list. Um, I'm gonna wait for like two, three episodes to come out because I don't like watching and waiting. So, man, (laughs) if 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 I'm be honest, I love Attack on Titan, but they talk a lot, so it makes it um, makes it hard to just watch three, four episodes of that at a time. But um there was a series that came out in like two thousand and six called Higarashi When They Cry. And um it's a horror uh anime um slash visual novel and it uh is actually being remade right now. Um 
it's it's weird. It's like it's a remake, but it's also a sequel, which is something I've never seen done, and I've never seen done right before either. So it's really cool to see. Um, it's really really interesting, really really dark. So for everybody who um, heard me talking about ReZero uh, the last time, if you're a ReZero fan, definitely check out uh, Higurashi. You'll love it. Yeah. Um, but I think that's pretty much it on my end. Yeah. See, uh, what about you? Couple, well, one, one, um, well, apparently there's new chapters of Berserk out, but they haven't been translated yet. So I probably won't get yeah. that until, um, next year sometime. But I watched that Blood of Zeus on, um, Netflix. I so, knew you did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I like that joint. It's not, um, it's not, it's not Castlevania. It's not that good. But, um, yeah, they definitely did. Yeah, don't, yo, that's what, um, they, it was basically on some like, um, uh, when a woman's fed up <laughs> type, type, type theory. That's basically what it was about. My man was cheating on his wife and she was like, nah, dog, I'm going to make you pay for this one. <laughs> so that's basically the whole story, but it's, but it's, but it's really dope. Um, have you seen it at all? Have it, Ray? Right. Nah, nah, I haven't had the time to watch mm-hmm. it, but, uh, it's definitely, definitely on my list. I've heard nothing but good things about it. I'm certainly gonna watch it very, very soon. It's in that seven and a half to eight and a half out of ten range, I think, so. It's pretty good. It's Ooh. worth it. I also watched that Dragon Dogma. And that was trash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did not that at all, man. It was horrible. I don't know what that was. But um but yeah, that's about it. I watched that jingle jangle joint on um yes. on Netflix too. That joint was tight. That's a, that was a good Christmas movie. Um so yeah, it's been a while since like any of the like usually like all the new Christmas movies be like cheesy to me. But um but this joint was uh but I like that joint a lot. So but yeah, I mean that's basically about all the things that I've seen. They um they announced the winners of that Tazuka contest. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. So um, I think it was like somebody from Spain or something won, and then uh, if they're not from Spain, they're from a Spanish speaking country, and then someone from like Thailand or India won, got the first that people got the uh, first place prizes, um, and. Uh, I mean, they definitely uh, show some good stuff. There was a lot of good entries, though, from when I was reading through. So that was, um, so, so there's that. Uh, it's interesting because I, I looked at all the prizes. I don't think any Americans got any awards <laughs> going, uh, going down, um, looking at it. Actually, maybe one person. But, uh, That's what I wanted to ask. Like, it, it, did any Americans win? Do we usually win? We're usually so, you know, good at cer- certain things. And I didn't know if, like, comics and that that um, that style is one of them. This is uh, the first year they opened it up um, internationally. Yeah, mm. it's, um, it's uh, yeah, I mean, I, it, it's a different feel. Like I said, like um, I said, when we talked about this, early last or in the summer um it was um usually they're looking for something that like you really want to be like true to what they what they're doing in japan and i looked at like the entries that um that they chose and that's definitely what they were looking for like if you came out with some something that was more westernized um or then uh you probably didn't get an award, and well, looking at it, you didn't get an award. But yeah, but uh, but for all the people out there that were um, thinking about doing it or something, or or looking forward to do it the next time, um, it's probably good to go read who won to see what they're looking for, um, you know, and read through what kind of what they did. But yeah, that's I mean that's about it for me as far as um, anything anything new. Started working on some new stuff, but um, I, I kind of jumped back into some pro stuff. Um, this little novel I was writing, so I've been kind of messing with that, messing with some comics and things, and um, you know, that's about it. Uh huh. 
Yeah, yeah, I saw that jingle jangle, man. It was um, it was like a Thursday afternoon. I threw it on, man. I couldn't take my eyes off. Like the music was fun, the story was like, it wasn't like oh I know what's gonna happen. You kind of did, but then they still had like fun with it, man. They like kept you engaged. It was, it was definitely a uh, man. I'm I can't wait to watch that again. Like maybe in this uh you know holiday season and then. Keep that on rotation for next year and, and upcoming years. That's definitely fun. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to check that out. Yeah, I heard it was uh, definitely a family family movie. <laughs> I wish they promoted it more. I know I didn't know anything about it. It was just me like, hey, man, it's a black hat. Let me, let me see what it's about. You know what I'm saying? They, I didn't know it was a musical. I didn't hear anything about it. It was just on one of my... Um, Netflix recommendations, you know, so I'm glad, I'm glad I, you know, I, I threw it on, but yeah, I didn't hear no promotions about it. I don't know if y'all could speak on that, but I didn't know nothing about it. Now, but honestly, man, it's, it's in, uh, in my experience, it is very rare for uh, Netflix movies to get a whole lot of um, advertisement. Like the only thing that I can think of um, that was advertised, uh, recently for Netflix was that um uh crap, what was that movie? The Old Guard. Mm. And I don't know if if that was only advertised to me because I got T Mobile or what. But you know, oftentimes I don't really see a whole bunch of Netflix movies being um advertised. T V shows are a different thing. Um but I could just be out of the loop as far as that goes. I don't have cable or anything like that. Yeah. Most people don't got cable anymore. True. True. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I've had it like five years. But uh, yeah, I guess uh, that's about it. I guess we could kind of try to hop into the um, to the main topic. Um, which is we just want to talk about um, a little bit about just, you know, how you can use, I guess, your, your creative skills. Um, you know, if you're working on comics, if you're writing scripts, um, if you're painting or whatever you're doing um, and, and trying to make that happen, how you can use those skills in other professional settings or like if you work, um, uh, you know, if you do your creative thing, uh, uh, in the evenings or in the mornings, whenever you're not at uh, your regular job, then um, and just ways that you can kind of work things in like that. So, um, yeah, you want to kind of touch on some of the stuff that you might do or, or suggestions that people could do? Uh, yeah. Um, so I actually uh, just utilize. I just was part of a um, art residency in Pittsburgh um, called Dropout Kids. Uh, where basically uh, different people um, who dropped out of various things in life, like I dropped out of grad school, um, we got together and um, utilized our talents and creativity to host um, an entire workshop. Um, it was really cool. Uh, obviously, you guys know that I'm an illustrator, so I was able to kind of use those talents and um, – make some extra money off of it as well. Um, I think that, you know, like oftentimes uh, whenever we think about comics and comics art, we think about how to quote unquote go pro. Um, but I mean, if you have the skill, it's already specialized talent. And so you're already a quote unquote pro. You just have to get yourself out there and market yourself um, in a way in which your talents can be utilized to the betterment of yourself and the community. Um, there are tons of things. So some, one of the things that uh, I actually learned during the workshop was about grants. And I believe we uh, talked about grants a bit um, on an earlier episode, uh, but I'm going to kind of just talk about those again. There are people who will pay you to do your stuff. Um, you have to have your projects organized. You have to have your projects well planned, but um, you can present them in front of a board. And like everyone who's listening, um, definitely like just do a bit of research, do a quick Google search 
on art grants that are in your specific city and you'll find um that there are plenty of ways for you to make money with your stuff uh even if you're not working for like a marvel or a dc or an image comics or shonen jump or you know this media or anything like that um so you don't have to limit yourself to just you know like oh well, i'm only going to do this on the side or I don't know how I'm going to be able to find the money. Um, you can actually market yourself to do your work anywhere at any time. Um, I'm, I'm not, even myself, I'm going to be applying to a bunch of grants for uh, 2021. You see, um, throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, definitely people should be looking into grants. There's a lot of them out there. Um, so it's just, you know, I mean, you gotta be organized, um, cause I mean, you know, read their submissions and all that stuff, but there's, 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 um, there's definitely money out there for creative people. If you're thinking, uh, how you're going to be able to fund a certain project or, you know, uh, if you got a big art exhibit or something that you want to do, or you're trying to finish, uh, you know, play or even make a movie, write a comic. There's grants out there for all of that. So um, that's definitely mm-hmm. something people should be looking into. Um, and, and like I said, I would say like too for myself, like because I spent so much time working in Adobe, um, like just in Adobe that basically even at my regular job and the people, which isn't necessarily something like anybody would like really think about like it's like um it's like if they're putting together like training material but sometimes like sometimes my department has to like if there's a new upgrade to this for certain systems and things like that we have to train people on how to use it and things like that usually i'm the person that then makes the training material because i can make it look nice and um presentable and you know, and I'm used to doing lettering and things like that, so I got a good eye for like where things should be placed and, and you know, eye flow and things like that. And 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 those those things can like you know even just stuff like that. Like I I, I do that in my comics, but bringing that into work also helps you kind of stand out even in your regular job. So like people say, oh wow, you can do that, and then you know it opens up different avenues for you. Um, within sort of kind of like the within the business world as well um you know it even like kind of touched on basically like as for me um i spent enough time in adobe illustrator that that i could probably freelance as a copywriter but i just don't have the time or the desire <laughs> to do that but like, yeah, well, you, know, you know what i mean it's um it's it, it, it it's kind of the same way like if you're an artist or something like that you know um there's there's different ways to apply you know if you if you're an artist and you and you're at work and you hear about somebody needs um some flyers or something done up um and maybe they don't have necessarily a marketing department or something exactly to do that or even if like they're just trying to do something for your department in your office and they need something done up sometimes it's good to volunteer for those things and then use your skills your art skills and stuff to do that because it kind of helps you stand out um, and, 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 um, you know, if you're trying to progress at where you're working or if you're just trying to make more money, um, you know, maybe that stuff can ultimately lead to a promotion. You make more money. You can then spend that money on doing more artwork to ultimately, if your goal is like to just do artwork full time to, you know, that, that all kind of encompasses and helps you kind of push it towards, towards doing that. And it's really just kind of, you know, you're a creative person. So don't just be creative when you're doing creative things. Be creative with your creative stuff in your regular day to day. Um, and one that, that also helps people get out, get, get your stuff out there. Like a lot of people are doing creative things and they do it and, you know, they promote it on certain platforms, but nobody they work with knows what they do. You know what I mean? And, right. um, and, you know, some people want it that way, but a lot of people, it's not that they want it that way as much as they don't ever really say anything, but that's kind of promotion, right? Like when I, whenever I release a, a new comic, I give it to everybody in my department. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I give it to everybody in my department to read and, and let them know kind of what, you know, what everything's about when things are releasing. And then they, they ask you about it and then they tell other people about it. 
you know, so, so there's also that part too. Um, you know, it's, it, you know, I guess it's one thing if you, if you're out there doing something that, you know, you might get fired <laughs> because, um, because what you're doing is like, you know, your company has some type of policies or something. But if you don't, then, um, you know, there's also no, there, there's no harm in, in kind of showing people your creative stuff. Um, basically anywhere you go, cause that's part of branding and part of your marketing is like, you know, mm-hmm. you can't just keep it all to yourself or you can't just market yourself online or, um, and, and through like certain cha- through the channels that you see big companies doing it, um, only like, you know, most, most people are going to get your, um, figure out about you as a small uh, indie person, um, from you, you know? Well, from people you told and kind of like, then they told somebody, you know, basically word of mouth marketing. Um, so there's, so there's that aspect of it too. So, you know, it's, it's not just like, if you're a creative person, you kind of have an edge on people who aren't necessarily creative. Everybody has a talent, but you know, I, I think a lot of people, like I said, I'm glad, uh, when you wanted to talk about this is a lot of people don't really, um, use their creative skills outside of what they're doing creatively. You know, they eat they write comics or they they're they uh paint and they do that for themselves, but then when there's an opportunity to do it um somewhere else or to use it to kinda just benefit a different situation that doesn't necessarily go towards the art, then they don't do it. Um and they probably should. But yeah. And yeah, no, um and I can actually I can personally uh speak to that as well. Um Whenever I first got my new job, uh, there wasn't too much for me to do. And um, so I made the offhanded uh, comment that, oh, yeah, well, you know, I um, I draw, I, you know, I make comics, blah, blah, blah. And um, they uh, expressed their frustration with their um, – graphic design uh, group that I guess they hired to redo their logo. And so um, they asked me if I'd be willing to, you know, put a few samples um, in the back. And normally I don't uh, do like anything for free, Um, but I viewed it like, well, they're paying me, like like, they're paying me my salary. Um, Let me just do this while, you know, there's not a lot of work for me to do. And so, they actually saw uh, the samples that I sent, fired their graphic design team. Oh, you get me fired. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that was was crazy. (laughs) Told me that they they wanted to put me on to do their logo and as well as um, some training material like Madison said. And I ended up getting um, a hefty bonus uh, for it as well. Nice. Yeah, so it's you definitely want to uh, always market yourself. Um, and if you think you're getting on people's nerves, so what? <laughs> Do it anyway. <laughs> um, because you have no idea how your skills can be used as a blessing in someone else's life or in your own. Um, just by telling what you can do and how you can do it. Right. That's what's up, man. That's that. Listen, I love those success stories. You know, you wanna, I call it that, you know, it's definitely a success story because they they now view you, you have an importance. So if they let you go, that can be something you put on your resume for another company. Listen, I was mm-hmm. doing this for them. I came in, you know, and, and excelled in this other department. So, man, congrats, man. That's what's up. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. about all I got. Newman, you got anything you want to add to that? 100%. So, you know, um, well, Madison knows, you know, I'm I'm, I'm helping my friend with a, a startup company he has. So right now we're trying to build partnerships with, uh, you know, other, other um, businesses who we think who would align with our purpose and, and mission. So you got to get creative with your proposal. So I, mm-hmm. and, Every time I do stuff, I always think back of our old episodes, you know, your words have to paint a picture, even if you don't see that uh, illustration or that picture paint. So right. with the proposal, I kind of wanted to tell a story. 
this is what we want to do. The reason why we're doing it, here's where we want to help, you know what I'm saying, um, partner with you. This is where you would benefit. So within those words, I'm trying to paint a picture, but I'm not trying to overwhelm them. Like a comic book, it's not a novel. The comic just has a few words, but you understand that story. You know what I mean? Within that, um, those pages and as it goes. So I don't want to overwhelm people. You know, being a startup, you got to get people enticed, but you got to pin down what is it that you want. So it's kind of helped with building uh, relationships and, and um, you know, putting out emails, putting out flyers, things of that sort. So it's kind of, it helped because the world has changed. Like those old sale tactics, no one wants anymore because if someone wants information, they can just go and find it. So if they don't know anything about your business, you got to give all of that and that, that proposal, that presentation, whether it's an email, whether it's a phone call. So putting that together and that creativity and, and thinking back to our last, I'm not sure how far back, but those, those podcasts we talked about, you got to have your words really paint a picture and it's got to be quick and it's got to make sense. So that's helped me, you know what I'm saying, with helping him, um, and, and, and building those relationships and partners and things like that. So, and I think they like that that approach as well because they they don't want that whole hey let's sit in this boardroom and and get the PowerPoint out and nah nah this is what we gonna do if you, we could talk past that great but here's where we feel it will benefit you. So again, that's us doing our research in the the front end. And then we got to know that that client going in. So you got to do research, but then when you paint that picture in in little words, but they really understand it, man, it, it goes a far way. And you know, there's a few things that I've done. I've gone back and rewrote uh, my book based off of our podcast, and I've been doing that a lot, a lot more. You know, rewriting. I'm working with the editor, so. Everything that we spoke on, I'm taking that and putting it to life. Well, I'm not just trying to talk about it. Then let's go on to the next podcast. You know, I'm sure I'm, I'm really trying to put the thing to work that we're, we're speaking of. Um, I'm getting my real estate license and I'm already thinking of things that to do that we've talked about when promoting myself. You know, when, 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 when that all comes around, um, putting together like videos for, for, um, these ventures, putting together videos, but having these videos like tell a story real quick, paint the picture. It has purpose. Um, and I kind of want these little short videos almost to be like a comic. Like you're going to see snips here, snippets here, snippets here. But when you watch it in whole, it tells a whole story, but it's not long. It's not overwhelming like a novel. It's going to be something like a comic book, you know, uh, thing. So everything that we said, yes, I, I practice it, um, you know, not just professionally, but even on my personal, um, personal uh, ventures, trying to be better at it and taking you guys' expertise and, and running with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's definitely helped in that uh, professional world, you know, the things that we have spoken on. And hope, you know, other people can see that. I, I, I mean, just thinking of different different industries, whether you're a construction worker and, and putting together um, plans, you know, it's it's got to make sense not just to you, but other people who are reading it. So if you take these in your, in your like you say, your professional life, have fun with it. It'll make your job easier, but it's going to make it easier for that next person to understand and read and to see the value like they did with you, Ray, and got rid of that other bum, you know, who couldn't do nothing with their graphics. <laughs> hey, hey. Let the record show that Raymond did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, but yeah, I mean, basically what you're saying makes it's like everything you got, um, everything that you do, you know, creative or not, is basically like anything that you do that you're good at or anything that you do that you enjoy is kind of like a tool in your toolbox. And a lot of people mm -hmm. have like, have like the toolbox, but they, they, um, they only use like one tool. 
depending on the situation. It's like, now nah, you can bust the whole toolbox out on any situation and see, um, you know, and see, see what, what you can use. Like people kind of like compartmentalize their different skills in the, into into certain areas but it's but you know as creative people you should definitely be creative in finding ways to work those creative skills into other things as well um one it just it gives you more work on your creativity but it also might open up some doors or or just provide some opportunities for you that you um didn't really see um or foresee happening right yeah, that's that's definitely for sure. Um, one thing that I do want to touch up upon, um, I know that we talked about grants a little bit earlier. Uh, people, um, if you are going to apply for grants, they're not just going to give you money. Um, they are going to ask for something in exchange. They're not going to ask for their money back, <laughs> but they are. They do typically ask to see um, the project that you're working on or some type of report or something like that. So you really want to make sure, especially like if you're in, in comics anyway, um, your writing skills should be, you know, on par. Um, but you definitely want to make sure that, uh, that your grant proposal is written well, but also that your report is written well, all, you know, in addition to that, because you want to be able to go back and request uh, more money later on in life. Um, and they typically like to give money to people that they have a good relationship with. So if you can prove to be a good uh, return on their investment, they um, are more likely to invest in you again in the future. For, um, for today, you guys got anything else you want to add to that? I think I'm good. Nah, man. Nah, we uh, we coming hopefully towards the end of this uh, what they call it, the back nine of this pandemic. Hopefully, I'm ready to get back out there. I uh, hear yeah, it turns everybody into zombies, and then we got to deal with the zombie apocalypse. But uh, we'll see. <laughs> I, I, I'm, it just, you know what? For the head. I've been thinking of that. <laughs> There's there was a movie that came out where they were all quarantining a horror movie and like everyone was quarantining but they did like a seance uh through the quarantine and um and they put it out quick uh basically all i'm saying is i am looking forward to some of like the creativity that that people probably possibly have put together based off of this quarantine for like all yeah. types of stuff if they do it well man not like like recycled Oh, man, you know, you know, you know, we know the recycled stuff, but hopefully, like, people got some creative things coming to the table, whether it's comics, movies, books, something, TV shows, music, or oh, I'm, I'm looking forward to music, you know, so hopefully people, people put that creativity to work during this time, man, the next couple of years, we see some new stuff come from it. Well, you guys got any shout-outs you want to give? Yes, I do. Um, my girlfriend's little brother actually sent me um, this Instagram artist earlier, uh, and they are daughter, like sons and daughters. Their Instagram is daughter underscore IG. Um, really, really creative uh, work here. Uh they definitely use like a lot of um warmer tones and uh, a sketchier style to convey their storytelling. But um definitely check it out. It's it's really it looks familiar but also extremely unique at the same time. And that's something that uh I always love to see in art. Um so yeah, no, check them out for sure. You won't be disappointed. Oh, yeah, no. there was this, um, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, but there was, yeah, there was this, uh, girl I came across, I'm not even sure her name, but, uh, you know, I follow a lot of children's books, but it's called, like, Wise Girls Read, and that's W-I-S-E, Girls Read, and, um, it's just a, uh, well, they call it an explosion of books plus girl power, you know, me having multiple daughters, 
always um you know enjoy that the, the girl power stuff, but it's like a book where you know the, the the black children she's um finding like the Christmas spirit, and they got um books on truly understanding the different shades of color in the world and. And uh, uh, it, shoot, there's even a book about like kids voting and understanding voting because not many people understand that voting process and the power or you know how that the three different branches of the government. So they they, they just toned it down and made it kid friendly, man. So like uh yeah, I definitely wanted to give them a shout out, man, because I just enjoyed it and, and we're glad to see that information being passed on. You know through our little seeds that we have sprouting as they grow but wise girls read um definitely want to give them some love cool and what about you bro i don't really got i don't really got a shout out i got a congratulations i got a congratulations to um to my artist um brian golden he um finished his series strawberry sea on my webtoons i've shouted it out before early um on the first couple podcasts we did but as he did 138 chapters of that, He's been, you know, so it ran from 2017 till now. Um, if you want to know what it's like to just be an artist, um, writer, creator, um, basically he did it all on his own. If you, and you know, if you want to see somebody take a project for an entire series that runs 138 chapters from beginning to completion, um, you should check that out on uh, Webtoons and, um, and again, just a congratulations because a lot that that that's tough, man, to be a, a one man show and pump out the amount of material that he pumped out for 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 um for for this for this um comic that he did. So uh, just a congratulations to him. But uh, yeah, that's incredible. Where they could find you? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> congrats, congrats. Yeah, wow, wow, that's awesome. Um, sorry about that. I was just, I was taken away by that. <laughs> uh, but again, everybody, my name is Raymond Youngblood, uh, aka Ray's Arts. You can find me on Instagram at Ray's Arts, R-A-I-V underscore A-R-T-S. Yeah. And yeah, you can find me, uh, on Instagram at C Newman 216. And you can also reach me at 216. Beep, 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 beep. All right, uh, Madison. <laughs> this is Madison with uh, Golden Tree Publishing. Um, you can find us at goldentreepublishing.com. Um, it's Golden Tree Publishing on Facebook and Golden Tree Publishing on uh, Instagram, but it's Golden Tree TV on YouTube where you can catch this podcast. Um, you can also find the podcast on the website as well or Podbean. And, um, yeah, um, you can pick up our comics, Unicorn Melee and ATA, which are, um, both are available on our website as well. But yeah, until next time, um, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.